Hello, thank you for coming to my video today, guys. Uh, this is really important information for both delegators and state pool operators. Um, these videos don't seem to resonate very well with delegators, but uh, these parameters are what determine how much money you get paid, um, your, your ROI in a year with ADA based on how much you have delegated. So these parameters are really important. So I'm gonna explain what all of them mean. I'm gonna give you guys my opinion about them now that I'm a little more informed. And I'm also going to be answering a lot of people's questions. Um, there seems to be a lot of sentiment in the community, like kind of negative as if um, if you don't have enough money, you're not going to be able to make it. So I'm going to be able, I'm going to try to um, get that idea out of your head and show you that it's still a possibility for you to run a pool. Um, but before we jump into the video today, uh, if you guys want to support me, you can delegate to my pool on the ITN. Um, the ROI doesn't really matter right now. Everyone is at about 5% or lower because... They shut off rewards um, and i think maybe the next epoch they'll start up again uh, we currently have 5.78 million uh, we voted yes you can also click the link down below to go to libri libri is a decentralized youtube platform it's really cool um, i don't really get much for you clicking that link but i do support their idea and i hope one day in the future they will be uh, as good as YouTube and then I, I want to support them until they get to that point. Um, it's really cool. What you guys can actually do to help me out on here is you can do this cool thing on my channel and you can support my channel. And it's the same as staking ADA, but you don't get paid for it, but you can still take it out, but it pushes my videos higher up in the algorithm. So it's a way to support me without ever actually spending any money. And then also, if you guys don't like the ads in my videos, you can download the Brave browser that blocks ads and trackers and also pays you in cryptocurrency for doing so. But that's the end of the intro. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, make sure to leave a like, turn that notification bell on, and share it on Twitter if you can. All in all, today is a great day. I hope you guys are having a good day too. Let's jump into it. Another thing I want to do for you guys is give you a couple resources. I know I've given this resource before, but firstly, this resource is really important. Um, if you guys want to know more about these values, you need to. They're, they're going to determine how much stake pool operators are paid. They're going to determine how much delegates are paid. Uh, it's, it's really, really important for you guys to know this so you can have an informed opinion about where these parameters should go, if they should stay the same, if A should go higher, if K should go higher, if K should go lower. We need to know this. So it, it really, it's really important for you guys to either watch my videos, watch this video. I think you should watch this one in particular. Uh, it's Cardano Pledge Rewards Network Security with Kevin Lars Duncan. Uh, it's episode 90. You can go through here and see um, what they're talking about in each portion of the video. Um, I recommend if, if you can learn things quickly, putting on 1.25 or 1.5 times and then listening to the parts a couple more times after you hear each one. It, they're just they're so important for the future of the network that and and I trust these guys I really do at first in my last video you could tell I was a little upset with the, specifically the K number of 150 um, I think that I, I still do think that kind of leaves out a lot of people but I am going to also speak for their side of this on why they chose K at 150 um, and and just to be honest with you guys uh, I'm not a mathematician I don't know Haskell. I haven't ran two, two, 2 million simulations for this. So that's why I'm putting faith in that these numbers are secure and also faith in the fact that if they're not, then they will be changed. And they've said that from the beginning. If these numbers are not perfect and they are letting out a lot of people in the community, then we will change these numbers. Specifically K, that's what I'm worried about. And that's another resource that I'm gonna show, have in the link down below is this blog right here. You guys need to give this blog a read. It's not only about K and A not, but K and A not have most to, the most to do with rewards. Um, another important parameter is tau. I mentioned that in my last video. That determines how much actually goes to the treasury. Um, that's, that's really important. You guys need to uh, read this article, get these parameters down. I'll also, also have my video explaining all of these parameters from A not, uh, K, tau, and, and rho. Um, I have a video explaining all that, so if you guys want to check that out, I think that's another good resource. Um, but we also need to keep in mind that they're raising K from 150 to 175 to 200 to 225 to 250. One thing I do not like, though, is how they didn't, didn't specify a time, but obviously there was good reason for not specifying a time because there's a lot of variables at play before we can determine these numbers. Um, 
So I want to give you guys a better understanding of, of K. Um, this is the optimal number of stake pools. Daedalus is going to rank these pools from 1 to 150, and these are the pools most likely to be saturated. There's a lot of things at play. There is a, a ranking number that they have released uh, a long time ago, and I'm going to show you guys that as well. So this is from the Cardano effect, and this is when A0 is at 0.50 and K is at 200. And this is what I want you guys to look at here, is there are a lot of things that are in play when it comes to ranking. Your cost per year, your, and then this, this is just what comes out of all these numbers. Your pool rewards per epoch. Um, I, I'm pretty sure this does have to do with the ranking as well, because obviously if you're getting more rewards, then you're going to be higher up in the ranking. Um, profit per epoch, uh, margin, operator profit per epoch, and ROI percentage. Um, all of this stuff is really important for the ranking. And essentially what they're shooting for is whatever K number of pools they have, those pools are all going to be close to saturation. And then all of the pools outside of that ranking are going to be people that really can't afford the pledge or don't lower their costs or their... their um, the margin they charge, they're not lowering that enough to be in the optimal number of pools. Um, and this is why I was like a little upset about K because I've met uh, many upon many upon many competent stake pool operators that that will amass to over 200 pools at least. I mean, we had much more in the ITN and this is mainnet. So obviously there's going to be a lot more interest in this than, than there, was, there was in a test net. And there's also a lot more interest in Cardano now that the test met was successful. So I think there are going to be a lot more pools initially, but in my opinion, I don't think that you guys should just stop your dream and say, oh, I'm not going to create a pool because of this, because they are going to be raising this K value incrementally by 25. But we also have to keep in the mind or keep in mind that the reason this K number is set so low initially is because you have to pay these operators to keep the network going. It's, it's imperative to do that because what if the value of ADA drops to four cents, to five cents? The, the val we, not, we might not be getting paid enough for, or these people that are in this optimum number of pools might not be getting paid enough to keep going. But we also have to think about if the value of ADA goes up. If the value of ADA goes up, there's more money in the ecosystem, so it's more viable to increase this K value right here. And Charles has always mentioned if or that, that he wants Cardano to be 1,000 times more decentralized than Bitcoin. And what he means by that is K equals 1,000. And that is what we're shooting for. So what I'm telling you guys in this video is to not just think because they set these numbers um, and you don't know what they mean 100% initially that all is over, you shouldn't run a pool. But you also have to keep in mind that not everyone should run a pool. For a lot of people, it makes more sense to delegate than it does to create a pool. But at the same time, if this is your dream and this is your passion, do not give up on your passion because there are other ways to make a profitable stake pool without being in this optimum number of pools. Because there are going to be hundreds, maybe even a thousand pools total. And you just have to attract delegates. And, and that's all it is, man. Um, K was 100 in, in the ITN. And my stake pool did did okay. I mean, I was very happy with it. I paid all I paid all my bills and I the, all the all the costs. Um, I'm not sure I really paid all the costs for the time that I've put in, but it was a very good learning experience, and it, it's going to make me a lot better for Haskell. And maybe the Haskell will pay off more. Um, maybe pay off the the time that I had spent with the ITN. But that was an incentivized test net. So it's but you guys also have to be be um, informed that most businesses aren't profitable in the beginning. That's how most business plans work. You, you operate on a loss for a year, a couple years, sometimes even longer. Um, and, and that's what these K number of pools, they're going to be able to, to be profitable in the beginning. But this brings me into actually explaining these and then giving some, some important details um, that I think that you guys need to know. So you probably already know this if you made this made it this far, but 
pledge is a value that a stake pool operator sets when they're starting their pool. The reason we need pledge is for Sybil attacks. If one person controls the majority of the stake, you can do all sorts of mischief. What someone could do is set up a bunch of pools at zero cost and zero fees, and this, would, this is exactly what would happen if A0 was low. Everyone would lower their fees as much as they can and lower their percentage, and it would be a, call, it would be a race to zero, right? Because you, you just need to be in these, these right. optimum number of pools. So if the cost is low, uh, the pledge value is low, then everyone is going to be racing to zero cost to be in this, this value, and eventually it's going to be zero. Um, and they also set a minimum stake pool cost at $2,000 per year. And that's to that's as a little blocker to that race to zero. Does that stop me, pay ADA, from setting my stuff at 2000 making that essentially the new zero? No, it doesn't. And, and um, so I think that's important to mention. But if all of these pools are zero costs and zero fees, and there's very low pledge between all the pools, it would be a lot easier for someone to do the same thing but set the cost even lower than everyone else and that's that's a bad thing because what they could do is i could set my cost as low as i possibly can while still making a good margin as a business but what this person could do as a bad actor is make it absolute zero and then that would attract a lot of delegators and all they would have to do is set up multiple pools make them all different and unique but have zero cost because that, that's what people are here for at the end of the day. And that's also another thing that I want to mention is it might not be the best idea for you to run a stake pool if you have no pledge. Um, this is The jury's still out on this, but I think it might be a good idea for you to wait until mainnet's out and see what's actually happening after a few, a few epochs. But this person could attract 51% of the stake and control the whole network. So this a not value and pledge is put in place to have stake pool operators like me lock a value in and also have to create some sort of cost so there isn't a race to zero. So it's also important for me to mention that there is no minimum or maximum pledge in there, and therefore the question of what pledge can I choose is such a hard question. The equilibrium pledge will be based on all pledges in the ecosystem and it will balance out after the first few epochs. Once the dust settles, there will, however, be an optimal pledge number based on the averages from operator's pledge. The optimal pledge number is where th there will be diminishing returns for putting in more pledge. And this will hopefully put a stop to the thing that we're all worried about, about stake pool operators just putting in an astronomically ple high pledge to push out the little guys, as it would just make more sense for them to just make another pool and pledge if they have more delegates to the pool. Um, and this is one of my main worries, and I haven't really found an answer on this. But when they set, and I would love more information on this, but when they set A not to 50, the pledges were very high in here. But one of the things are, one of the things they mentioned is they're doing this for one reason, and it's because they want people to put all of their money in. That's what the simulation was about, is the whales are putting all of their money in, but the whales are kept out. So the operators are putting as much pledge as they can based on the, um, the formula that he set. So one of my main worries is you have, these are pretty high pledges. It's 0.50, so these numbers are going to be much, they're, they're going to be skewed because it's a simulation, and they're also going to be much higher because a naught's 0.50 instead of 0.30. Um, but, but what stops this guy right here from at 10 million pledge? What stops him from just making two pools at 5 million apiece? Or say the optimal pledge number is a million, so he has 10 million. He can just make 10 pools and then pay pay somebody um, a pretty. I mean, it's not going to take much. It's not going to cost much more to run 10 pools. I mean, there's going to be a high initial startup cost. It's it a lot of work starting them up initially, but maintaining 10 pools versus seven pools versus five pools is not not that big much big of a difference. It's going to cost a lot more in, in server cost um, and a little bit more in, in manual labor, but that's kind of one of my big worries is because they set up this optimal number so low um, that a lot of people will just split up their stake and because they're in that optimal amount, they'll get delegates anyway. Because I, I preferred the network being the, the amount of reach you have in the community, the more you do for the community, the more delegates you'll get. 
But with the, the route that they're choosing to go is have an optimal number and they want these to be at saturation or close to saturation. And when they are saturated, the delegates will be notified and then they'll just go to the next pool in line in this ranking system because you're going to get the highest rewards from the number one pool. So that's my main worry is them splitting up more money um, because, I mean, it, there's so many whales and they have so much money that they could just set up. 10 pools here, 10 more pools here, 10 more pools here. But we're not sure that's going to happen. And that's why it's also really important for you guys to start your pool if you want to start a pool early and put in the amount of pledge that you think is right um, because it will lower this average. Because these numbers are based on, like I said, an average of all operators' pledge. Um, it, but also it's important to know that you don't have to have the optimal pledge for your pool to be profitable. You do not have to be in the K number of pools for you to be able to pay your bills and for your pool to be profitable. Uh, you can make Your pool can make it without both of these things. Um, and there are a lot of stuff in the pipeline, uh, more opportunities for pool operators to make money in the future, and then also the them increasing that K value. They've already said they're gonna increase it to 250, and I think eventually it will go up to 1,000 when they see how much enthusiasm there is in the community. Well, that's really it. Uh, I just wanted to make a real quick video um, explaining that you don't need to be in K number of pools to be successful. Um, and also, just, just because you're not in K number of pools initially, you can do things to eventually be in K number of pools, such as them raising the value, the value of ADA going up, so there's more ADA going around for them to support us. So, uh, sh will, rail will whales run Cardano? I don't think so. I think they might initially, but I think it's important to have um, some people that you know are going to run the system and for the system to be very, very stable initially. And as soon as we realize the stability of that and we realize that we can support more people, we will raise that K value. Um, and I think it's really, really important to touch on this conclusion once again. Um, choosing good values for all Cardano Shelley parameters is a hard and complicated endeavor because a lot of concerns have to be balanced, security, efficiency, stability of the system, on the one hand versus economic viability for stake pool operators and delegators and long-term stability of the ecosystem on the other hand. No other blockchain has ever done this. So it's, they've run two, 200 or 2 million simulations. So it's, it's important to trust the values that they've chosen based on these factors such as security, uh, uh, efficiency, stability, and then also the economic viability of stake pool operators. And I think this is really important because if we set this K value too high, then that saturation would be too low for these stake pool operators to be able to support the ecosystem as much as they want. I think it is, is okay for a, a stake pool operator to wanna to have high operational cost. And if you set that K value too high initially, when the value of ADA is too low, you can't do that. And, and also delegators too. If you have too, too low of an a not value, delegators are gonna be paid less. So it, it seems, I think a not was set at a, pretty good, at a pretty good point at point 30, because if you would have set it too low at like point 10, you don't really have much more room to go down if you need to. Um, but if you set it too low and for security purposes, that could be a, a very, very bad thing for the system. We could experience civil attacks. But that's all I really had to say about this. Um, I was just kind of commenting on, uh, I was given a, a smaller breakdown of my video from the other day. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not angry about these numbers. I do think K is still a little low, but they are talking about expanding it. I would like more information on the exact variables that they're looking at uh, for them to determine when K will actually be changed. Um, because I think 150 is a little low. I think there's so much enthusiasm and there are so many competent people that are willing to run stake pools that 150 is very low initially, but we need to see um, how much the, the people in the 150 are getting paid and if that's enough and if that's viable enough for them. So it, there, there's a equilibrium here that we have to find as an ecosystem. And I like that they're, they're, um, they're willing to change because like they said down here, we, we did our best to come up with a reasonable proposal but we will know it will have to be improved upon over time. These values proposed here are just a start. We will closely work with our community to refine and adjust them over the coming months and years. 
If these parameters are not what they're supposed to be, we will realize it pretty quickly. Um, and, and we will just have to come out as a community and decide what would be better and, and run some more simulations for sure. But all in all, I don't think whales are going to run Cardano. I think it's important to um, be able to pay the initial stake pool operators enough so we, we have a, a backbone, so to speak. But do I think you should start a stake pool? That's up to you. If you're worth, if you're, if it's worth the risk to you, then do it. There are more avenues of revenue coming in the future. But just remember, you don't have to be in K number of pools. You don't have and have to have an astronomically high pledge to be a part of it. But if you're really, really, really worried about this, um, and you have a low pledge, like I would say, less than, I don't know, less than fifty thousand. Maybe wait and wait and see what happens. You know. But also at the same time. If you pledge that 10,000, that 5,000, that 15,000, you're lowering the averages from everyone else. So if you believe the pledge value should be lower, then start your pool up initially and have a low pledge. I mean, it's, it's that simple, you know, but it, it, a low pledge if you don't have, a, if you have a low amount of ADA. But I also want to mention that in a tech talk, um, they said that it, having just 2,000 pledge you're not going to be, the rewards aren't going to be drastically different from someone who has 2,000 pledge and a million pledge. Now take the 2,000 number with a grain of salt. That could that could be scaled up a little higher, maybe 40,000, maybe 60,000, but the rewards are not going to be that different from the bottom to the top, but they are going to be different for sure. And we're going to have to see what those numbers become. But that, I was just giving you what... Um, Kevin Hammond said to me during a tech talk. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure you guys share it, leave a like, like I mentioned earlier. But I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Uh, I also have a podcast uh, coming out tomorrow at 1 p.m. EST. Um, it's with Kaizen Crypto. It's going to be a fun time. So if you guys would come to that, I would appreciate it. But like I said, have a wonderful day.